Hi there. Come up on the porch. We're just sitting here watching it rain and talking about Louisiana. I'm Bruce McGee. I'm Steve Payne. And this is the Louisiana Anthology, episode 570, April 20th, 2024. Welcome back. Tonight we talked to, or today we talked to Ruston musician Jackson Skilling Stud, and um, he's from Ruston, Louisiana. It's been to Tech, and uh, um, we talked to him about, um, you know, his uh, life in general, but also how that affects the music that he makes. So, uh, yeah, um, if you're interested in uh, good local music, look him up. Uh, and we'll be looking forward to talking to him in a few minutes. I'm Bruce McGee. And I'm Steve Payne. And we're here today with Jackson Skilling's Guard. Welcome, Jackson. How y'all doing? Jackson Skillingstad. You got it close. Oh, though. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Skillingstad. It's okay. I it had it phonetic. And Cassidy Greer. Hey, Cassidy. Hey. Howdy. And um, you are a local musician, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where did you grow up? Um. So I originally lived, um, grew up around Dubok in oh, Ruston. Cool. And then uh, about third grade, fourth grade, or fourth grade, actually, I moved to West Monroe. Mm. Now, were you coming to town, or did you go up to the school at Dubok? Like, uh, I never went to Dubok. Oh, well, I went to Heiko for oh, like a yeah. year. Mm. But I was a bad little right. kid. I, they, threw, <laughs> they threw me right out of there. So <laughs> <laughs> It is way out in the country, and it's across the road from this Methodist church in the valley. And I've been to... Uh, stuff at that church and the always part of Lincoln Parish. Did they did they close down Heiko? They did, yeah. Closed down Dubach except for the elementary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dubach area is Stephen's yeah. ancestral um, Dubach and Hilly. That's okay. Yeah, yeah well see uh my grandpa lives in Hilly. Currently my grandparents do so you And know, who is he? Daryl Campbell. Mm, okay. Know. Okay. Well that's his section right there by you know Donnie Brown. Yeah I know the name. Yeah, yeah. okay. My so, parents yeah. knew him but yeah, yeah yeah so right down the road from him. Oh. I used to live at Kimballtown, which is Sharon, which is like five miles further okay. than Heiko. Okay. Maybe four, it's four miles. But, there was um, a... It's a town with like ten people, and they have two names for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, hilly, we're hilly. There's that bad curve, if you know what I'm talking about, up in the north side of hilly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it makes a bad right angle curve. It goes south, and it goes further down, and it passes a couple of houses. And this old blue-looking house, that was my great-grandma's house. Okay, okay. With siding on it. Now, this house is well over 100 years old. <sighs> And then there's another bad curve where the railroad tracks used to run through there. Right, I know what you're talking about. That was where my great granddad had a general store. Okay. And my granddad was a postmaster. Hilly had a post office. Okay. Well, the road, That's hilarious. The road from here to uh, Dubuque has been widened, but also straightened a lot. You know, these roads used to just kind of wander through the hills. It makes it hard to, you know, drive safely. Um, well, if you've got a nice straight road. The promised land. A lot. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Boy, I was really ready for it. And by the time I uh, got it, I was not living up there anymore. So. <laughs> so, so, so you grew up in West Monroe and went to school there? And- um, So I moved back uh, at the end of eighth grade year. So Moved back here? Yes, sir. I went oh, to cool. actually Dubok. Uh, I think it was the last year or the oh, year yeah. before they ended at uh dubach middle school or whatever it was at the old high school though but so where'd you go in monroe uh i went to holland elementary in westridge mm, yeah cool so um and so you graduated from dubach high from Ruston High, because they High. closed it down. Uh, I was about to say, I thought that Dubai mm-hmm. could close. Yeah, they closed it my <coughs> freshman they have year. To bust so. the kids all of Ruston, and it's like 13 or 14 I, miles. I guess, you know, transportation being so much easier, Dubai's skipping a jump away now, but, you know, going up 167 <laughs> was not in the old days. <laughs> so, uh, where did you start getting interested in music? Um, really... My earliest memories of music, um, when I was a little kid, which, you know, I'm 21, so 2002, so probably about when I'm five, so about 2007-ish, uh, I remember my grandparents had a computer, like a big old old school computer in the yeah, back yeah. room, 
and I just get on there and just listen to all kind of music and like Three Dog like Night, YouTube Ace stuff. of Bass, yep, stuff yeah. like that. And, I saw uh, the sign. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> old school stuff. Three Dog Night, that's really old school. Ace of Bass is a generation closer to us. Yeah. I do love Three Dog Night, especially that I must let the show go on, and they got this freaky video. It's. Uh, I haven't seen the video. Oh, uh, yeah. It, did, you it's listen disturbing. To deep, <laughs> deep, did you listen to Deep Purple? I didn't. Go look didn't. for Deep Purple and Smoke on the Water. Okay, I know Smoke on the Water. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was big when I was a kid. And, uh, gosh, Chris, it was like some really, like, middle of the road. Like, I like Jim Croce. Uh, yeah. But I like the Carpenters, and then they had ABBA. And, you know, it was just like uh, I've got the taste of kind of the mass more of the stuff they're churning out, you know. But uh, I do love some ABBA. Uh, so what... What are your musical influences? Like, who did you like the best? Yeah, so those were some, those two names I just named, just kind of subconsciously, you know. But growing up, some of the best, uh, my favorite go-tos, uh, I grew up real, so like earlier on, I grew up real rap heavy, like real just kind of obsessed with hip-hop. Mm. And uh, as I've gotten older, I got in the country a little bit older, and now I'm kind of in like my, I'm obsessed with rock stage, like, Sadly, as sad, sad as it is, I just listened to the Rolling Stones for the first time like a month or two ago, and now I'm kind of like obsessed. You're caught with them. on catching up. Yeah. I know, yeah. So I'm doing some catching up, but but still, like um, when I came along, you cut your music off of albums, the the spinning kind, you know, the old vinyl they call it now, uh, but that was a record, and um. Gosh, AM and FM uh, radio and uh, FM okay, came along and blew <coughs> AM out of the water as far as sound quality and stuff. So you could get some pretty good stuff if you had a good stereo in your car, um, or you had a good antenna at home, right? Where you could right. pull it in, <laughs> pull that stuff in. So um, yeah, and you heard what they played, and. I mean, every now and then you'd hear an old Elvis song or, you know, old Johnny Cash, but it was mostly current. And so getting in touch with the older stuff is really hard. And I've, I've noticed over the years that, um, you know, not everybody in my class will have heard of Three Dog <coughs> Night, but some of them do. Like, you know, you can just go back and get in any era that you want and watch that. Yeah, I'll, I'm super Listen. appreciative for that because, you know, I feel like that's something like I've never got to experience Prince and you know he's kind of big on he ne he never wanted his stuff to be online and he didn't his family didn't want his stuff online and I feel like you know as cool as that might have been in time like here I am someone who's obsessed with music history and music and I, I can't really just mm -hmm. name you a bunch of Prince music you know just because of that fact but well, like you can um you know, you can make money off of stuff selling it online now. It's not like it's all stolen, but it's hard to make getting good money on that. Right, right. I noticed that, like, um, we wanted to put some Ernest Gaines. He was our probably our best-known author when we got started, living author. But, you know, there is nothing, not a thing by him on the Internet. Like, they... They kept it all boxed up. It's uh, paper only, I guess. And, uh, well, and it's it's your your classmate Julie uh, down in Natchitoches, Julie Kane. They got some, or they wanted to get some of his stuff for an anthology. She she and some friends were putting together, and I think the the people like the copyright holders, I guess the the estate slash publisher, wanted something like nine or ten thousand dollars. Well, when we were looking, they, into they it, it ended up eating some of the cost eventually. For it would have been three thousand, and uh, you know, like. Um, we finally have a little budget now, so we can give somebody a hundred dollar honorarium for being in our what three thousand dollars? You know, go buy that guy at the bookstore. He wants that's how he wants to do it, and uh, yeah, uh, to let him do it. But uh, yeah, we don't have any of his stuff on our website. I don't think we've even had an episode on him. No, we haven't. We, we, we need to for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate. I, I, and it is cool to like only be like, yeah, I'm on paper. I. There's a country artist, I can't think of his name, but he's still just, he's like, man, I'm on a cassette player or I ain't on nothing. And I'm like, dude, like, but what about the, if you're like an artist, you know, to me, art is big on like, I want to impact generations to come. So, so you need to be online. That's the only way to keep it in front of you. It's just kind of, of, of wide your reach. That's right. what you're doing. Right. There was a, 
gosh, around 2000, there was this uh, mp3.com, and it was legal stuff. Of people who were trying to break into music would upload their stuff and let people listen to a sample of it for free, you know. And it'd be complete songs, but then they'd like, okay, if you want more of this. And I got really, like, into some people nobody's ever heard of, like Fisher. <laughs> um it's a woman, uh, and, you know, but I loved her stuff, I, and I would it's, listen to it. It's all an time. audio appetizer, that's what I call it, because you, it's like you go to these... It was audio like, streaming. And like you go to Taste of Monroe, right, or down at the Civic Center or whatever. You right. do, Even in Ruston, we've got a small one, I think, and you go there, or like the International's Day, where they, oh, yeah, they like a, serve the foods of all the different countries, you know, the students. Give away the, the same first thing. sample right. for free, exactly. and then buy the rest. Exactly, yeah. and it, this is kind of like that. You go and you sample their music, you know, say... For free, like you, or even for say ninety nine cents, and it just went right. away, and uh, then it became like eventually YouTube came along and people were putting stuff there, and sometimes they have a video with it, sometimes it'll just be a you know um, a placard <coughs> uh, there saying who it is. So, what was your first instrument? Okay, so I mean, crazy answer, but voice. Uh, I'm just now learning, which I feel like, you know, I didn't really have the opportunity to grow up with just parents and everyone around me, especially like anybody who knew how to play any instrument, you know. So I've been taking guitar lessons uh, There's with a guy who actually played a lot with Doug Duffy, and uh, his name's oh. Austin George. Cool. Stand-up guy. So uh, I'm in the process right now of learning electric. I'm going to move to acoustic next, but I mean, me and her – we have a, uh, what do we have, a keyboard, a saxophone. So do you play in the band, too? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just play around. Uh, well, you know, if you get good, you can go on out there. And part of it, you just jump out there and start doing it and eventually get better. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, no band. Uh, no, choir. unfortunately. Uh, yeah. When I have children one day, I mean, I'm going to push that down their throat. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, dude, just, you know, go be in choir, go be in mm-hmm. band. Well, like, for my era, or for people like me, <clears throat> um, in school, you've got to find your niche, right? The people you're going to hang out with. And mine were all in band. Like, band was a core. We, You know, we got... We started in, what, fourth grade, um, you know, the last three years of elementary, and then, uh, you know, junior high, then high school. And it was more, over more, it was more than half of my time, you know, growing up that I was in band. And, um, you know, it was just uh, the people I was hanging out with, right? And it gave you a group. Even band was considered kind of nerdy, but. There were a lot of us. What did you play? I played first cornet. Okay. And then when I got to junior high, um, Glenview Junior High, it's a elementary again. Now. I went to Glenview, so. Cool. That's really cool. <laughs> we were in the build. There was a metal building down at the end of the school, and uh, um, we were in it. And then the other side of it was uh, PE. But anyway, um, they switched me over to French horn, which. Gosh, wounded buffalo. It's just like uh, you know, you're, you can finger whatever you want to, and just the sound that comes out will be up to your lips. And you know, it's just um, with the trumpet, you kind of get close, and then you push the levers, and the right sound comes out. But that is not the case with the French horn. <laughs> ha! So yeah, but you know, friends, and also I learned to appreciate music. And I've heard somebody say, you know, all these people in band, they don't all grow up to be professional. Probably, you know, 99% don't. But they become good consumers of music because they kind of recognize stuff when they listen, and um, you know, have more appreciation for it. So that's what banded for me, you know, for now, you know. That that was me with choir because his sister was a yeah, senior when I was a fr- was I was a sophomore, and so she was the the choir director was desperate to bring in some a bunch of new personnel because a lot of the others had graduated the year before and so they needed warm bodies basically to staff those chairs and so i was one of like 12 or 13 sophomores they brought into the choir that beefed us you know beefed us back up to like right. 60 or more members yeah, that gave you three members. years of choir yeah i was in yeah and, and yeah rustin high concert choir from sophomore year to senior year and did and, you find that um 
a lot of those became your buddies at school. Yeah, some of them did. Well, and I knew some of them. You did, too. We knew some of them from Temple. Right, too. right. Um, we both went to Temple Baptist. Yeah, his dad yeah. was our minister. And, and so, yeah, okay. I knew some of them. In fact, I knew several of them from the church. His sister and probably four or five of the guys and, you know, probably that many or more of the girls, you know. Okay. So, so, so we had a good, and we had a good, we had a very good choir director, too. Um, okay. Were you in choir? Um, so. Yeah, I was not. Like I said, I. You said talking about niches in high school. My niche was, uh, I think I'm too cool for all this, you know, and I <laughs> highly regret that now because, you know, that didn't get uh, me anywhere, but, well, I you know, have, here we are. I think a little bit of Asperger's, you know, I'm kind of on the spectrum a bit. I don't give a crap <laughs> think about me. I'm just, uh, I want to play a instrument. Right. So I, I, I understand that. that. Yeah. I uh, understand that. But they, to me, it was very cool, you know, and, um. Oscar Barnes, the director. Commander Barnes. Something very smart <laughs> along the way. He would um, he would get the band uh, together to do a Christmas concert. Like we'd practice that, and pretty easy music, and you can knock it together in a week. And then we would spend a couple of days just going to all the elementary schools and putting on a concert. And I remember that concert from when I was a kid. And there was this a guy I knew. Uh, he, he was in Temple too, and. He like looked six feet tall, and he had that like cool uniform and and uh, a trumpet. He was carrying around a trumpet. I said, Ah, yes, that's that's what I want. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, you can't make money. So most of us, do. and I wasn't good. Like uh, I didn't have the talent. My son Jonathan, um, he's a professional level drummer. Like okay. uh, he went through tech. He was getting um, invited down. I know he played it. Uh, Alexandria with their orchestra okay. a few times and um, you know just very very good and he he, he kind of got burnt out but I see he's starting with another group now uh, he's dead lives in Florida but they're doing something so uh, he's got too much talent just to let it go you know without doing anything with it were, were, were you um, were you playing instruments in, in high school at all, or so yeah, you just picked it up on your own? I just or? picked it up. You know, I didn't really genuinely have any access to anybody who knew how to play instrument, right. anybody who had an instrument. You know, and how did you teach yourself? Like, is there, <clears throat> imagine there's stuff online. Like, here's yeah. how you play chords. Like I was saying earlier, really lessons helped a lot, and uh, yeah. that's really a, a big investment. You, you mm-hmm. I, I was quite or. I think it would be good for anyone to make that wants to learn how to play instrument. Arts education. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's well, hard. You know, YouTube's hard. I, People I thought, say I YouTube, thought you were but, about to say that, that you finished West Monroe High School because my cousin taught over there for years with Bruce's mother-in-law. In fact, they were big buddies. And she was a pianist. This is my, my one of my mom's nieces. Is and that I said, over there on 7th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big one. And and that's where you it's, uh, graduated. It's, it's the I biggest. graduated from Ruston. Yeah, he okay. came back over here. Yeah. But, but no, I was telling her, I said, you know how mom and some of that bunch, and her mom was my mom and his baby sister. And I said, you know how they got involved in music, don't you? She said, how? And I said, granddaddy wanted them all to play. Because out in the small towns and country, there was no entertainment. This is <laughs> yeah, this is before the days of radio. You, know, right. you realize, I mean, my grandparents on my dad's side got a radio in the 30s. So how, the how did they learn to play? Some of them, like a lot of us, have a native gift for it. And my mother was like that from her mother, from my grandma. And she okay. could, yeah, she played by ear. She could sit down She's and play so, the bass. So yeah. they all just kind of figured it out. She Sometimes did, they had and, lessons, but I think a lot of yeah, them. Yeah, a lot of them didn't. And they had an old an old spinet or something, but it was an old upright piano. They, she would sit there and play that or upright organ, one of the two. So there used to be this thing called the Steams. It's too small to have a Baptist church all the time. Week one, every month was a Baptist. Week two, the Methodist comes in and preach, maybe a Pentecostal, maybe a, um, a Presbyterian on week four. But then if you had a <coughs> fifth Sunday, there was nobody to come. So you'd sing all day. And they had shape notes, which looked like regular notes, you know, on the page, but then they're shaped. And so people who can't read music the normal way can learn to read the shapes. Uh, I know, okay, this is a third and this is a, you know. A, a, so I had a great grandfather that led those things. Like we've been musical for a, for a long they time. They were all over North Louisiana and South Arkansas. My granddad would take them up to El Dorado. There was a big one up in El Dorado. There was one up at Homer, maybe. 
Oh, uh, Texarkana had some. I know that because I, I, they actually drove from Ruston up to Texarkana, and that's a little over two hours. Yeah, there. yeah. Uh, this is long before I-20 and I-49. Yeah. You know? Oh, my goodness. Went by Highway 80, and then you hit Highway 71 in Shreveport and went north. You know? <laughs> that's funny. And, but, yeah. but, I mean, he, and I told my cousin, I said, so you know why he did that? How come, she says. And I said, because he wanted his kids not only to have a, a source of entertainment and creativity, but a source of of a personal expression, if you will. And I said, he was that forward thinking for an old logger. That's what my granddad, our granddad was a logger. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was and he nothing, wanted them to be able to express themselves through music. Nothing for yeah. us to be like sitting around on Christmas Eve and Uncle Shine, he was a uh, mother spells brother. Boy, I've got some names in my family. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Shine comes in and next thing you know, we're all gathered around the piano singing, you know, Christmas Hoot songs. Nanny. Yeah. Hoot Nanny. That's it. That's what they called him. Um, Little bit of hoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when did you get a guitar then? Um, actually, she lets me use hers all the time. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> talent alone. <laughs> yeah, so I use hers mainly in uh, was about a, probably April. I got it in April, but I just started taking it like seriously, like fell in love with it probably like three, four months ago. I, mm, cool kind of head over heels in love with that guitar now so, so what kind of guitar is it <laughs> all i know is it's electric <laughs> it's <laughs> <black>. <laughs> all right all right <laughs> it's an ibanez is that how you Ibanez? say it right how, however you ibanez, say, how ibanez, you say ibanez, it something it one sounds of those. like a spanish brand it is <laughs> it is it's a really good spanish brand it's like what's the name of it again ibanez, 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 ibanez. one of those yeah yeah well you know uh Let's uh, consult the classical Google machine. guitar <laughs> style, kind of, you know, the Spanish really, they were on top. Look, there was this guy named Segovia. Have you heard of him? I've got seven or eight of his CDs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a bunch. I'm a guitar so head. My roommate, um, Simone, he was a really good musician also. And, um, I mean, he would sit around and play, you know, at night after we got back home. It was just so nice to listen to somebody that knew how to play. Right. Uh, and um, he was studying with a guy in New Orleans who was one of Segovia's pupils. So I got to hear about all of that. Um, and he found him before the web, right? He, he yeah, found him yeah. by doing some know, searching around the city of New Orleans. Yeah, it was like one of his last pupils or something. And he's right here. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, at some point, do you go to New Orleans much? Um, Not much. I do love New Orleans, though, but I don't get the opportunity to go that often. Well, they call it busking, where you go out on the street, and a lot of okay, people start right. there, and they move up, you know, get, get like gigs in um, bars, and, you know, it, yeah, kind of. most people don't ever become super famous, but they kind of, you know, make a living. Um, but it's also like uh, you come into contact with all these other people, and it can, you know, like... Help you kind of sh- like, mm, you know, you can get together with people and then have a little band and uh, go around and play. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, it's not many places up here you can busk, but right. I guess you can sing um, like bars and stuff. Have you started doing that? Yes, sir. I um I had two shows <laughs> last year um at the Rev. You know what's the old name for it? Uh, Rabs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. yep. So yeah. I had two I shows there. The service road. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Two shows there last year. And that was my first two times performing, and uh, I mean that's, I, you know, it's, I've never felt more like alive than that. You know, it's a good venue. Um, um, He's got that big sound stage on the back. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, right. That's the side of the building. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> Willie Nelson has played there. Really? Oh, Ray, Ray Benson, <laughs> the front man for Sleep of the Wheel. They performed that's crazy. His, yeah. I don't know if his band performed there, but Ray Benson himself has I, performed there. That's crazy. I think what happens is you've got big bands that are, you know, got stuff on the weekends. That's when you get the stuff lined up. You're kind of driving through the area uh, from here to there. Uh, we could stop in on a Tuesday. Why not make some money? Well, we had a, and, uh, we have a friend that knows. Well, he was the booking agent for a while. Over there. For Willie? Uh, no, for Raps. For Raps? Uh, uh, yeah, Monty Russell. 
I don't know. Okay, don't Mon, know yeah, Monty's a guitarist and singer and songwriter, all three. You know. yeah, his he's a local musician. Yeah. You hook up. He's, he's, he's performed up at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. I don't know where all else. Yeah, Monty's kind of big time, but he's okay. based right here in Ruston down in South Coast. We'll Paris. have to make that connection. Yeah. Sundown is a pretty good. good venue, too. Like, uh, get up there in the patio on a nice Saturday I think they're night. closed, aren't they? Did they close? I don't know. They're for sale. I know that much. Are, they, are you serious? Yeah, I think they closed out. Oh, man. That's, that's going to be bad. That's the person I used to like to eat there sometimes. Yeah, I like Sundown, but it's for sale. I, I'm pretty sure it's closed down as well. I think it's for sale for like $3 million, I think. Oh, man. Well, here's the Sundown Tavern. Let's see what they say. Um, <laughs> Technical difficulties, please stand by. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're right. That was back in um, it says September. Now, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, that's a shame. That was a nice place. It was a nice It place. is hard. It's not as hard as it used to be. Like, you'd get a decent dining, um, you know, a, a, a restaurant in Ruston and maybe make it a year or two and then it closed. It was just so hard. But eventually... Well, we loosened the liquor license laws. Yeah. And because that's where the profit is. It's not worth your while. We couldn't get any of, like, Bennigan's. I don't know where we have Bennigan's, but whatever that is we have over on the interstate. They aren't coming to your town if they can't sell alcohol. Right. Yeah, permanently closed, it says. Mm, that's a shame. Well, I like yeah, I, I, burgers. I tell burgers. people that Ruston is not. We, we are, well, we are going to be soon. I tell people we're not. We're not wet. We're not dry. We're damp. Right. We're damp. Meaning you could go buy liquor by the glass. Yeah. But you couldn't go just buy a fifth someplace. Now you can. Now you can. Now yeah. you can. Now you can. <laughs> well, my dad had a lot to do with that. He was a the opposite or the teetotaling Baptist minister. Ah, okay. At Temple as well. So. Yeah. You have okay. been to Temple? Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is your dad, how long has he been, pre, does he... He was there from 64 to 98. Okay, so okay. He was there a long time. And along the way, we wrote a new constitution as a state, about 73. You know, one a little less racist, perhaps. Um, and uh, part of the constitution was everywhere was by default, open you, you could buy anything anywhere uh, but they had room for a local option and so uh, um, my uh, my dad got everybody together like uh, for some reason they teamed me up with like my best friend's dad mr. Washington and it just felt so odd like why is he not with Lane uh, but anyway we'd walk around banging on doors and uh, asking them to vote no and the day uh, before the election uh, this is great there's this guy he somehow got a speaker on his car. And, you know, he's driving around Ruston saying, Vote yes, yes, yes. Vote yes. yes. <laughs> that's, that's like Return to Mayberry. The guy's got the, got the speaker system up on his car and he's hollering, Vote for me. Vote for Ben Woods. Vote for Woods. You know, he's running against Barney Fife for sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, well, that one was a classic, man. It was, uh, and we were. Another band story. We were standing out on the field, you know, kind of practicing, and here he comes. You know, and he made the loop a few times. Vote yes, yes, yes. We want to <laughs> get <funny>. that outcome. <laughs> we voted no, no, no. And uh, so, yeah, it stayed dry for a long time. Um, but, yeah, he was the old school Southern Baptist. He just thought demon rum, man. Um, and I know a lot of the deacons... Uh, a lot of everybody drinks at least moderately, so... Um, right, right. But they'll come into church and, you know, okay, we'll go along with you. Um, so, yeah. Oh, um... You know the frozen daiquiri? There's a thing... I heard that podcast that y'all did. That uh -huh. was really Dolph cool. Williams. It was, that was really cool. cool. <laughs> Dolph's parents, Dolph Williams' parents, they were they were over in Sabine, and they voted dry, too. And so they started looking on a map. We want a wet parish that's near a dry parish. So uh, Jonesboro, the... Jackson well, Parish. Jackson Parish, Parish yeah. Siblings were over. They were wet, and they could get, like, right at the edge, and they opened up this place, Wilmart. And, um, man, people 
And it was a they awful. were racing across the parish line to get to Wilmar's. <laughs> <to Walmart's laughs> literally, it was, <laughs> it was an awful road. Like it was, you know, like riding a, a roller coaster. You really don't want people who are inebriated to be driving on that particular yeah, road. Why well, they did, um, and eventually she had some daiquiri mix that nobody would buy, and one day she threw it in a blender and um, put the daiquiri mix in some uh, vodka, I guess, um, whatever she put it with. And, man, those things started selling like hotcakes. Yeah, all the, all the tech kids were rolling down to, right. <laughs> well, rolling down to right. Jackson Parish. Um, That's you know, funny. The, the hospital, their shift, the, the, the graveyard shift gets off at 7. He said, we'd be getting there like 7.30, and there are these nurses waiting for their morning <laughs> shot. <laughs> frozen daiquiri. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I know they're all over the world, but the Frosty Factory is right here. Mm. Well, let's, let's go back to where you've been performing. So you you were playing some gigs at some bars and little little venues like that, pretty much. Um, who who were some of the people that were kind of helping you, but also performing with you? Yeah, so um, there's a guy named, uh, he makes music, and uh, I can't, exactly recall his music name but his name's peyton leggett and uh he's a student from tech and uh we super randomly met can't even remember how we met <laughs> and, and he messed around and kept emailing the owner of rabs and just kept emailing him and finally got a sit down and he was a big part of that reason getting me kind of on board which you know i mean i'm from here and i i kind of always had like a decent size following musical presence here you yeah, know so yeah. you know kudos to both i feel like you know both of us we put on a really good show together you know yeah, what and I mean? if you got fans it'll come out and listen they'll probably also spend money and that's what the the rabs needs or whatever they what are they calling it uh the rev revelry revelry oh my gosh we had a you know where dixie theater is i do i want to go there really bad but it's cool they refurbished it now, but uh, when I was a kid, there was a restaurant across the street. The only thing you ever heard people call it was the P.O. Cafe, short for post office, because the federal building next door had once been the post office. So it was right there, and, but it had moved like 30 years before, <laughs> and it, this thing says Pete's Place, but nobody knows what Pete's Place is. You go to the... Uh, the P.O. Cafe. Yeah, they were famous for their pies. Did mm-hmm. you ever have a chance to eat there? They had probably closed up by the time we moved to Baton Rouge. Yeah. Know, so I didn't, didn't eat there. When, by the time you got back, it was... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They knocked it down. <clears throat> it's a parking lot, so... Is it right there where that little mural is, kind of? Yeah, it's okay. across. Like, if you're looking out the front door, it's just right across the street. Okay. <laughs> is that the big stone building downtown? That what used to be the old federal building. Mm, I mean, so it's that's a parking lot now. I don't remember exactly what's now. Well, oh, the big stone building. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was the post office. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it has maybe that some other government too. building. Yeah, look, it's a kind know. of a nice building, really. It's a nice building. Um, I don't know what's in it now, but nicer than what they moved into. But very utilitarian. The third pl- I know. Um, <laughs> back in the day, they would build things to be pretty as well as uh, functional. I miss that. I miss those days, like. Yeah. McDonald's used to look cool, you know? Like, where is that at? Now everything's, <laughs> now everything's so, I feel like, just straight to the point, just middle. Cool buildings and scary clowns. Well, you look yeah, at clowns don't scare me, but anyway, they do some people. <laughs> like, Ruston High School, it was built during the Depression by the PWA, which is kind of like the WPA. They called it the alphabet soup. They, you know, but they went around states putting up public buildings and you know Ruston High is a beautiful structure you know it's got that floor on it that he said it's not actually marble it's something that kind of looks like it but it's cheap but you know it's uh still looks better than an art art deco kind of design too you know it's it's on the national register supposedly Ruston High School really yeah really it's a historic building. Yeah. It reminds me more of a prison. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I went there, you know, went there four years and graduated, but that's kind of the feel I got out of it, though. <laughs> so, I had a best friend who was uh, something, uh, my best friend, um, you know, he knew how to get around stuff, and like, uh, and uh, we would leave every day and go eat lunch and then come back. And, um, 
it was the opposite of sneaking off. Um, if you sneak off, you're going to get caught. Um, and we would drive, there's this, you know, loop. It was mm-hmm. before they had the uh, the wall up there or whatever, the, the, the gate. And we would just drive up and drive through, and everybody can see us waving, nothing to see here. And it's like a Jedi mind trick, man. Um, somebody finally caught us, but uh, <laughs> we got away <laughs> with it for months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they did not like you leaving the campus. They yeah, they I think they've held that principle pretty. They don't when I went there, you would get in trouble uh if you pulled up in the morning and you were early, if you sat in your car, mm-hmm. they would come knock on your window. <laughs> Time to get out. Yeah, come on, man. Like is school started yet? Then they really kind of leave me alone, you know. <laughs> God, that's like Barney Five, man. That's oh, yeah. awful. Like, do they have? <laughs> yeah, it is. Do they have uniforms now? Yeah, yeah yes, so sir. They have uniforms. It yeah, really is like a prison. <laughs> it is, which I kind of... Where you wear orange in the, jumpsuits? So. Right, right. And in the moment, I never understood uniforms, but now that I'm older, I kind of do. Because there is a lot of people out there that don't have, you know, proper clothing every right. day. And, and then everybody has the same thing. Right, and yeah. so it kind of, you know, but there's if some that stuff... Were their, like, if that were their goal, that would be one thing, but I think a lot of it's just control. Like, I think it is, too. They're, they're terrified of losing control of the place and i mean for good reason back when i was there it was you know going through the early stages of um integration and there was a lot of unhappiness all around you know everybody's mad at everybody else so you you had to kind of keep a tight lid and i think just 50 years later they're thinking oh this can happen anytime these kids are going to raise (laughs) up i kind of think not (laughs) i don't think so either i think they're a little too uh which i'm not criticizing them but you know, if you if you don't have on a ID with your name and picture on it around your neck, I mean, that's detention. You know, you're suspended. Oh, man. I mean, you can't wear jackets, can't have backpacks. Right. I, I get it to Can a certain extent. Can you have a clear ex- backpack? I don't think so. I don't think so. So you got to haul something under your arm, I guess. Yeah, you just have to have a binder on you at yeah. all times. My son has a <clears throat> junior in a high school down in New Orleans. They wear uniforms, but they can wear those mesh backpacks that you can see through. Right. Uh, they tear up real quick, but they got also really cheap. So, have you started writing songs yet? Yeah, yes, sir. Definitely. Um, I've every song I've ever recorded, which is probably a little bit over maybe 150 songs. I've wow, wrote all that's of a them. Lot. Yeah, it is. Are you putting them online? Yeah, yes sir. They're on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. Um I want to get some cassettes made. I want to get some vinyls made, but that's going to come a little bit later. That's an investment. It is. Uh, but you know, if you've got enough followers, you know, when you give a concert got those at the back selling and the t-shirt make sure you get a nice t-shirt design right what's what you call um your group or do you have a i'm just it's just me ah. just solo um everyone knows me around here i used to go by astro jackson and that's what i mean ah. everybody calls I kinda, me astro i kind of like that but i kind of I think last year, yeah, I kind of was just like, you know, like, I'm a big, huge Elvis guy, huge Johnny Cash guy. It's funny you mentioned them earlier, but, and I was just, you know, like, like, this is their name. Like, I want to go by my name. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, I want, I want to, I pictured Elvis's name across that Las Vegas hotel, the big red letters Elvis, and I was just like. Flashing in red. Yeah, and I was just like, I was like, that's his name. It's not it can be Jackson. Right, right, Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> No, you'd never get that last name up to me. It's too bit long. It is know. long. It is long. <laughs> it is long. Yeah, um, how, how, how do you spell your last name? It's uh, I'll spell it for you right now. It's uh, S-K-I-L-L-I-N-G-S-T-A-D. Okay. Well, I spelled it right, at least. <laughs> Even if I can't say it. <laughs> yeah, because I think I found some of your stuff on YouTube. You should I have. Think. It should be pretty expandable. So, uh, what all instruments do you use? Like, do you mix, like, you do drums and then guitar right. and mix it all together? Or? So, um, I think the new age, which I'm completely for the old ways. Like, it just costs a lot of money or you got to know a lot of people to do the old way. But 
the new the new like my generation is you know people can make electronic beats and stuff like there's a guy i work with religiously from new york um his name is nm Circio, and he you know we kind of both started off just not the greatest and we've been building together for probably like four years now and that's pretty me and him pretty much just that's who i use all the time he makes the music instrumentals on his computer and all that and uh sends them to me but there's also guys that play the guitar and they turn it into beats on their computer and then you know i use that so it's a mix but definitely my ultimate goal is to live band behind me you know do you use audacity or garage band um i've used all i've used both of them a little bit um i'm a big there's a program called pro tools and uh, I'm a big Pro Tools guy, but I've definitely used Audacity. And so uh, they're another kind of like um, uh, Audacity, or something. I would say maybe you know not to down anybody's company, but maybe a little bit better, you know, a little bit more expensive. <laughs> oh well, I like the price of uh, you know uh, Audacity. Yeah, what well, is it free? Is yeah, it free? Uh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> the price, the price point, is right. man. Right. The price is right. And we've been like. We don't do music, but I've been mixing the podcast, and uh, you know we have segments like um, the introduction, and that's a separate file. The music, whoever that is, and we try to do a different music every week. That's a different file, and then uh, the actual interview, and then um, the outro, and then another file or the. Uh, we we went through this process like. Um, What's going to be our intro? What's going to be our outro? And I was trying to think of music that would represent the whole state, but nothing does. We've got too much diversity. Um, and one night I've been listening, you know, it had been a rain in Alexandria, and it was kind of blowing off. And you could still hear a little thunder, and the frogs were all awake. I said, ah, yeah, you hear that everywhere in the state. So that's right. our intro. So did you record that? or? Absolutely. I, I was <laughs> really? sitting on a bench by a pond in our apartment complex. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I had no idea. She asked me, she said, she said, she was like, I thought this was recorded. I was like, no, nah, it's sound effects or something like that <laughs> no, today. Yeah. today like, that's funny. I recorded it personally, and then um, I did the hi there. And uh, I had my kid, uh, we were just trying to get this going, had my kid at um uh mcdonald's he was playing in the playground it was another rainy day too um and uh it was too noisy in there so i went outside and waited till the cars were quiet and i did that standing by the mcdonald's <laughs> that's funny <laughs> surprisingly good sounding and I, i've never had a reason or we haven't to go back and redo it it seems to be all right we should have had a, a, a mascot as the red ants like fire ants. Right. <laughs> because right. there are fire ants from Venice all the way up to uh, three what? states up there at the Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas line, up well, there way above Shreveport. Right. You know, there's fire ants all over the state. So <laughs> we have a fire ant as our mascot. Here's the power of a nice logo. Like, um, we initially were the anthology of Louisiana literature, and we actually got an editor to talk to us. And she wasn't terribly interested in what we were doing. She shortened the title, get Louisiana up front. So we changed it to Louisiana Anthology. And Stephen had the idea of using the state map to be our L. That's, yeah, Tech does that. Right? Okay. La mm -hmm. Tech. Okay, you're right. Yeah, it's perfect because right. it forms the shape right. of an L. So. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, it's a great L. So, you know, just, and it's, you know, it, it wasn't the thing we thought of first, but once you get to that point, you say, oh, yeah, this is going to be us from now on, you know. And I need, we need to start saying, like, from Lake Providence to Lake Charles, and notice how this follows, and then from Venice to uh, Vivian. Well, that forms the four corners of the state. Oh, it's just confused people. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, it forms it does, the, yeah. the forms of part it of does. the state. Uh, the only exception is the Florida parishes, you know. You'd have to say, I guess, from Bogalusa to someplace over, you know, around Lake Charles. Right. But, and the point is it basically forms the shape of the state. Mm -hmm. Right. From the 33rd parallel at Arkansas mm -hmm. down to the 28th parallel at Venice. Right. So, oh, down below that. Yeah, so we've got a brown one. I like that. <clears throat> That's really cool. And, uh, and our other... Oh, it doesn't show up here. I, I don't have my... Uh, when you put it on the um, the la the desktop or the laptop, it reconfigures and you see the white thing, but it, it doesn't show up here because, uh, uh, you know, we, we were making it so it would hop around. So, yeah, yeah I mean, 
Do you have like a website that shares? Yeah, yes, sir. I um I got two actually. Um, one for my music, and it's my first name and last name music dot mm-hmm, com. Mm-hmm. Just all one long thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, sir. And then uh, my second one, I'll give you the ad for that after. It's uh, I have a clothing brand, just real rustin, lo- oh, local. Cool. You know, and uh, that's kind of my other little passion, my other art that's form. That's cool. And uh, so you're getting your swag going. Yeah, yes, sir. I wanted to bring y'all some stuff like a hat or something today. I just stock is low right now. Just, right. It's, it's more of an online. Um, as soon as somebody wants something, I'm like, okay, well, let me order it in real quick type thing, you know, but it's legit. Well, here's our kind of song, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do, um, yeah, we're, we're thinking about a store, like, um, you know, swag store, right, and have stuff should. like uh, t-shirts, hoodies, and hats, mugs like this. Right. Yeah, right. that would be nice. I um, think y'all should. Fridge magnets where you put it on your refrigerator. Uh, stickers where you stick on the front of a notebook right. or in your car. Car, or, yeah, yeah, wherever you want to put it. I think y'all should. It's not I very want fuzzy physical. dice. That's what fuzzy I want. Fuzzy dice. Fuzzy dice. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what? Um, know. what store do you use, or like, um, um, you know, to sell your stuff? Right. You, Shopify. Online? Okay, I've heard of Shopify. Can, How do you like that? I, ten out of ten for me. Um, and will they do an on-demand version? Like that's uh, what I do. You don't want. A thousand shirts. Yeah, I'm just not Tommy T. Hanging yet. around in You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then but. you have to slip it to the box and put it in the mail. And, the, you know, if you've got just print on demand, they order it. That one gets printed. And it's more expensive. But, you know, especially starting out, I think it's the realistic. I think so. And you know, there's no way Steven and I are going to sink, you know, a thousand dollars into a... <laughs> you know, a bunch of different swag and hope it sells. Right. That's other yeah, you, you so have what, to eat the cost at that point. Really what right. of yours is selling like uh, the best? Um, clothing wise, definitely hats. Hats. Definitely hats. <laughs> um, are they uh, like baseball cap type hats? Yeah, people love that. Uh, you know the Richardson One Twelve hat. That's the that's the thing in style right now. Probably for I could see a little bit longer, a while longer. Uh, it's just super basic, super home style it just kind of fits you know kind of fits with jeans kind of fits with sweatpants oh right 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 yeah it's kind of perfect well i mean i've never seen like logos and stuff like on a cowboy hat or a beret and you know it's just it it, it, it's kind of the mark of the baseball cap that it has some kind of logo on it and uh, you've got to decide okay what's going to look cool on this and you know, you don't want it too long or nobody will be able to read it. Um, so maybe lot anthology for us. And it needs to be eye-catching, too. It right. Has to, it has to meet certain criteria. Like you said, it needs to be short and maybe memorable. It needs to be eye-catching. Uh, it ought to be aesthetically pleasing. You know, it ought to, you know, you ought to see it and say, well, that's kind of pretty or that's nice or whatever. Right. Instead of something, unless if you're trying to promote something that's ugly or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like out yeah. of a horror movie. For example, uh, but yeah, it ought to be something that that looks good to the eye. I like the mm-hmm. fire ant idea. Yeah, I think that's I, got I a funny little antenna. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, I think that's really, you know, yeah. I, I, think I, I thought could. we should have like a Louisiana society, uh, maybe even for the art to call it the Crawfish Catfish Coalition. You know? <laughs> yeah, Crawfish yeah. Catfish Coalition. Well, that's yeah, good. because of the, of the crawfish down south and catfish up north, right? Right, right. Hey, we got the yeah. crawfish up here too, or sometimes we do. Not sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> I haven't had a. Real, Crawfish in almost a year. That's, uh, but I'm not paying fifteen dollars a pound for crawfish. <laughs> yeah, and no is. more from sundown. Ooh. Yeah, no more for sundown. God, we're gonna be in mourning tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put on the black crepe. Well, apparently we had a big drought the last year, and that's why there are no crawfish. Um, so yeah. It was a dry summer. Uh, it's been wet ever since then, but it, it was a dry summer last year. I guess year. there. It wasn't wet when they needed it to right, be. Right, right. So what genres do you like to play? Yeah, so um, like I said, I kind of grew up on a mosh pit of stuff, a gumbo of stuff. <laughs> and uh, I, I can't, like I, my biggest struggle is when I go to upload my music and they ask me what genre is this. I'm like, I don't right, know. Yeah. I have no idea. It's just, it's just kind of, sometimes I'm feeling real country sometimes i'm feeling real El- i make some songs that try to sound kind of like little rock and roll, you know, yeah. rock and roll right rock and do you do rap I, I do i do that's that was my um 
kind of I'm kind of away from it now just because I feel like it's a little bit older. Right. The things most people rap about, it's not really a ple- a, appeasing, pleasing to me or whatever the word is to me now, you know, so it's more rock and country kind of now. Right. But. So do you want to play us a song? Oh, yeah, I could, uh, I don't, you I got don't, your guitar. I out. can't play, can't play any of my music, unfortunately, myself, but, uh, I could either do an MP3 or email y'all an MP3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or we could download one from, like we've uh, done with, um, from YouTube. With our friend, um, down south, and she's, she's from New Orleans, and she performs in Miami now, or someplace in Florida. Who is that? jazz singer, um. Sybil Gage. Sy- Sybil Gage, yeah. Okay. And she sent us a whole album. I think really? it was eight or ten albums. I mean, really? songs. Yeah, it was a bunch. I'd like to send she y'all sent one that uh, I just recorded. No one's ever heard it. Hmm. And y'all could play the first snippet on hmm. y'all's show. Okay, cool. Yeah. Breaking cool. news, Yeah, folks. breaking right. right. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Breaking <laughs> news. <laughs> we don't have, well, sometimes we have announcements that aren't anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> it's not that often. Well, but, tell uh, us about that album, because I've been dying to tell my cousin about it, because he lives up there but Darbone, that album right. that you cut. My cousin lives right by the state park, actually. Right, right so uh, do you know where um, Pea Ridge is? Between the artists, uh, musicians, singers, whoever, and the audience, and they, they play off each other, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it you know, totally they, does. They play off each other, and it can make for some great, you know, some great, great music. Right. Know? I never understood, uh, I never appreciated live music until I went to Nashville, and I went to Nashville and just seeing... Going on Broadway, you know, seeing all these people singing live music and mm-hmm. stuff, it, it ch- I think that experience changed mm-hmm. my life forever. You know, I was, I seen that and I went home and was like, okay, guitar, YouTube, like, let's get it rolling. You yeah, know, yeah. Hmm. There's no substitute for it. And again, that's not saying that, that recorded music is, doesn't have a place. Right. Because it can capture, and particularly even when you got a concert where they're performing live, but they recorded it. Right. They had all the equipment there, and they made a you know, record, you know, permanent record of You've it. You've also got a pretty right. good um, number of places where you can go and play. I guess they're mostly bars, but, uh, you know, um, you know, it's a place to get up and get in front of people and see how they like it you know there's an energy to mm-hmm. uh, uh, an audience um that you don't have if you're just playing in a room by yourself right i agree i definitely agree um there's a lot of really cool places around here like to me in um you know i would say i'm decently kind of big you know kind of especially like around here i would say that i'm more popular than most you know just to recognize of, your name right yeah you know, but but music. to me you know going to el dorito and playing i mean that would i mean be everything even though i've done the rab staying twice and you know that was hmm. a, that was really fun amazing but just me being able to go like pluck a guitar at like what what's that new uh restaurant the mexican restaurant beside super one El Doritos? No, no it's all that. Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, no, it's, what's the name of it? Is it Gonzalez? Is it? It's right beside Super One. What's the name of it? I'm sorry. I might be wrong, but I think it's called Gonzalez. They joke about all these What does that even mean? I'm sure it means... They, they open up and they'll, they'll joke about them on Rusted Rays and say, <laughs> yeah, what we need <laughs> is another Mexican restaurant. Yeah, yeah. El Chorito. El Chorito means El little... Jarito. El Torito means little jar. I, you know, that's about the extent of my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the deal with Mexican. Like Senorita, El Jarita, no. the, the, little lady. Diminutive, right? No, you put it on lady. the end, and it's Senora. small. Well, I was using the Italian pronunciation, but still. You know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me ask you this: Have you performed any in Shreveport? Because there are a lot of places over there. I have not. Uh, you ought definitely to try to get list. some gigs over there. Okay, you know? definitely will. There's a. Super talented guy over there around my age who does uh, violin, and he's kind of taken off right now. It's really cool to watch him. His name's uh, Q Major, the violinist, I think. And so Shreveport's kind of no, they're, they're they, really good. They've got a serious art scene. They've had one for years over there. Like I was saying when we were sitting down here, this cousin of mine that I don't know, <laughs> well, it's one of my dad's what? you know cousins' what? daughters, but she um, – she performs. She's a keyboardist, but she's with a band, and it's not just two or three people. It's six or seven of them. Do you know I, that band's name? I, w- I mean, I was looking on on her niece's page, trying to see if I, could, if I looked around enough, I probably could find. Right. Them. Okay. But yeah, they they've been doing stuff probably 
I think since the eighties. They've been around a lot. Yeah, they're really they're, yeah, this cousin is much older than I am. She's okay. probably late sixties, I'm okay. thinking. That's really cool. But and yeah, she's the keyboard. She's the patron keyboards for the band. Okay. You know. With the entertainment industry growing over there, you know, they've got big stars that'll come <clears> in to <throat> do something and leave, but they got people that live there all the time and they've got a lot of talent. And you know, they gotta do something when they're not doing a movie or a TV show. So right. um, it seems like doing local concerts would be a good way to supplement that. And maybe even recording. There might be a studio over there. Yeah, I, I believe there is a couple. Um, There's got to be. You can probably set up a home studio that sounds as good as, you know, because th- the technology is so much more sophisticated and so much cheaper uh, than it once was. Right. So, you know, used to when a studio and it's got the, you know, egg crates all around, yeah. keeping it quiet, and, and uh, you know, the the mixer with a thousand knobs, and you gotta really know what you're doing to know which knob that. <laughs> right, right. Like, I have a seven hundred dollar really nice camera. This iPhone 13, which I got a couple of years ago, takes better pictures, probably because it's more close to idiot proof. You know, like it'll do whatever needs to be done to make it a nice picture. And for me, it's like all of these uh, <laughs> things to, you know, what's an F-stop, an F-stop, stop. stop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's just like, uh, yeah, but this thing you go out and there's a little, like, X. And then if you get two Xs, that means you're moving. So you try to get the X all back together. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have a nice still picture <laughs> in the dark when it's finished. So, yeah. And you have to learn how to use the equipment. I mean, it's not like you're born. Well, you wanna, right. You know. These smartphones are much more intuitive mm-hmm. than whatever it was before. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you've seen cameras. You know how many dials and settings there are. It's, it's a lot. Well, I see we've been going about an hour. Did, did we uh, leave off anything you wanted to talk about? Um. Not really, you know, just um, wanted to say I'm a big, I didn't get to tell them that, but been listening to y'all, I've told y'all this already for about a year, you know. I'm so happy somebody's listening that I'm not having to make them listen. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, your assignment is to listen to this episode. Right, right, and just hope they do, you know. Right. Yeah, um, I appreciate what y'all are doing. There's somebody that's got to talk about the stuff that y'all are talking about. I'm excited to see what's going to be the... uh, the fact of the day, the fact of the week coming on this episode. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I love that segment. Like, I do, too. Today in Louisiana history. Right. Big fan of that. I was telling her about that today, too. I'm a big <laughs> fan of that. No, we just it started, you know, just me and Stephen talking for an hour. And then we slowly, we started doing more and more interviews. But then we wanted to add, you know, like the music section, you know, uh, this week in music and uh, postcard from Louisiana. Yeah, right, that's it. right. Pretty much, yeah, right. Yeah, and the, those are mostly music. And then we have the three updates: and New Orleans history, Louisiana history, and this week in Louisiana, like what what's going on right now. And yeah, that's when we profile the festivals and we really, <laughs> really had to stretch it during COVID because. But you know what we did have were these uh, parks and lakes were open. And it's outdoors, and you could go there and not be in the house, you know, uh, driving everybody crazy. And um, there was a, so we cabin did, fever. <laughs> yeah, we did a different park every week, and okay. like, like a bike or trail. And you know, there's just different things you could do that were COVID safe. So, right. Yeah. Somebody should write a book about the Louisiana State Parks. Because they're some of the nicest ones yeah, in the country. Have been. You and know, they're, some they're, of their they're all around the state. There are literally parks, if you can believe, on the Gulf. There are literally campgrounds on the Gulf of Mexico. Well, I've seen them. I've seen really? photos online. Yeah, they're, didn't they're down there below, uh, below Venice, of all places, <laughs> down southeast of Venice. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't the second national park by Teddy Roosevelt here in Louisiana? Yeah, the National Wildlife Refuge, the Breton, down there around the Chandelier Islands. Yeah. yeah. And the teddy bear. Uh, he was here on a hunt. And um, I had no luck all day. And so after he got back, we had this sad looking bear chained to a tree and said, Okay, you can go shoot it, Mr. President. I am not shooting that bear. That is I'm not, not going to shoot it. That's not bully. <laughs> bully, yeah. bully. You know. So anyway, it became the model for the teddy bear. It was a famous, you know, like people were talking about him not shooting the bear, you know. And, and so somebody said, Ah, I could make money off of that. 
it was as close as you'd get to environmentalism in that time. It right. was conservationism, they called it, but yeah. But he, the, it, Bruce was saying that it's not only the only one that he visited in his lifetime, but we've got film footage of it. Really? Early film footage, yeah, from like 19... I'll have to go find you know, that. 1912 or it's 1913. It's on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can watch it. And they had evidently a couple of cameras, and I say that, but at least a couple of cameras, because there's one camera filming them trudging around on, on the island down there. It's on one of the chandeliers. Yeah. But also, there's another camera sitting up on a tripod, so they're filming the other camera as it's being set up. So they had at least a couple of cameras. Right. But yeah, they're walking around the island. You can see them. One of the islands that they visited no longer exists because the Gulf melted it. <laughs> yeah. Because really? those are those little barrier really? islands yeah. off, the, off the coast. Yeah. And it's down due south of Biloxi. It's, you know, they're, they're shaped like a comma or like a crescent moon. Yeah. Well, you can look at them. If you go to Bil- look at Biloxi on a map or on a globe, look due south of Biloxi. And they're due south of Biloxi, Mississippi. Are but it's, those, it's the um, easternmost part of Louisiana. Are those uninhabited, Stephen? Like, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah I mean, did, birds. There's, there's, there's birds on them, and I, I'm trying to think. And there's a lot of, uh, like, marsh grass and right. some scrubby scrubby bushes, that kind of thing. Trembling prairie, that's what they call it. You but know, they were inhabited 200 and some odd years ago. There was a fishing village on one of those islands. Really? I'd like to go village. there with like a metal detector or something <laughs> if there's any like that would artifacts. Be cool. yeah. That would we be need so to cool. take a field trip down there. They you got know? these. Yeah, uh, count me in. They got these YouTube videos of some guy with a really heavy magnet and it's on a rope and he keeps throwing it in the water. I know what you're talking dragging about. Dragging yeah. stuff out. Yeah. Oh, here's a pipe bomb. <laughs> Yeah, like, what is, like and, uh, what so they call the cops and the cops. Well, have we, we've got we actually um, the great like, the great historian. Quit playing with that dang magnet. <laughs> the great historian Doug Brinkley had written a book about uh, Teddy Roosevelt and the founding of the national parks and all this. And we well, should have he, that person on. Well, he he wrote a thing about the the founding of the Breton Wildlife Refuge, and so. I said, wait a minute. If he's quoting from this, that means the article still exists. That means we can find it. Yeah, and I'm good yeah, at that yeah. kind of stuff, apparently, or at least according to Bruce. And so I just went on a hunt for it, and I found it. It's in, it's in Scribner's, the old magazine. And that company still survives Scribner's Publishing. And being that old, and, it's public domain, yeah, so you yeah. can put it on our website. And it's not a really? short article, like a page. It's 15 or 20 pages. He became a columnist We've for been Scribner's working on that, haven't we, Stephen? Life. Right. Yeah, I think I think the, the students the, have yeah in the hopper or whatever. But, but yeah, he wrote this extensive article about that island, those islands, because it's a group of them. And he was outraged because women, rich women in the Northeast, were were what they were doing. This is capitalism at work, literally. But the hunters were going down down to the to the chandeliers and they were killing the birds just so they could get the plumage for the women's hats. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The first kind of capitalist, you know, Gilded Age excess you can right. imagine. Right. And and Roosevelt was outraged. And to his credit, he took that up as a cause. And this was, I think, when he was still in office. So what he did, he had that area protected so that it could not be, you know, infringed upon yeah. the future. You know? Yeah. So 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 it's kind of it's kind of a nice story actually. Yeah, so, that is really cool. So again, they they filmed it. The guy, I don't know if it was the guy who was a McElhenney or maybe connected to them. But anyway, it was somebody pretty well healed in South Louisiana, you see them go chug, chug, chugging up in their little boat, their little yeah. yacht, up to the, the coast of, of the, one of the islands, and the water's shallow, so they can they can only go so far in where they would, you know, end up grounding the boat or beaching the boat. Right. And so they get out and they got their pants legs rolled up and they get out and walk through the surf to the island. And the water's maybe, you know, I'm 6'2", and so the water's maybe, you know, maybe up, say, below my knees. So it's really shallow water. Right. And they walk ashore and they walk around. You see them. I mean, it's really remarkable. It's, you know, 110, 115-year-old footage. Yeah. But you see them walking around the island, you know. And it's not a, length, you know, lengthy clip. It's maybe seven, eight minutes, nine minutes. Yeah, but that's still... Yeah, it's it's pretty rare film footage. And right. it's, it's in the Library of Congress. It's, it's all public domain stuff. Right. So when we get it, when Bruce and the students get it ready... What we'll do then is have a link to the film. You can actually watch the film, and it depicts what they were doing on the island. Well, okay. you can. We've been having to learn legal stuff, so uh, you can embed a video on your website, and it's if it's under copyright, it's the person that has it on the YouTube, not us. So you know they just take it down from there, and it disappears from our site. But you know, rather than upload like videos on our own website, which would be you know how big they are. Yeah, they're really. huge files. It's just too yeah. easy to <laughs> upload stuff on YouTube, you know. I agree. Uh, and it'd be easy, yeah, like you said, just embedded on our page. Yeah, right. And it is. This is public domain. It's a government, not document. It's a government thing. Right. Well, and like as programs change and stuff, um, 
like YouTube is always making sure their stuff will play. And if we had our own thing up there, you know, like real, uh, what was it called? Anyway, uh, nobody can read that that format anymore, that file format. And so, because it, MP3 went out. Right. So, right. yeah. Um, well, thank you all so much. This has been great. Um, and keep us posted, like, you know, if you come out with the album or going on a big tour or something and want to um, pub, you know, publicize it, let me know. Let yeah, me know. Sure. You'll have to, at the, um, when we leave, I'm going to get you to send me that. I'd like to watch it. <laughs> Yeah, there's another, uh, the Times Picayune did a whole 14 minute segment on their website. This is from seven years ago, but it shows, it probably shows the whole thing. This is called Roosevelt, Friend of the Birds. <laughs> Friend of the Birds. <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's, it, I mean, the islands that survive today look, they're basically unchanged. I mean, they look like they did a hundred and some odd years ago. Yeah. And there's all these seabirds, I don't know if they're egrets or what they are, but anyhow, they nest there by the thousands, by the thousands, and you can see them. And they fly in there and they all, you know, drop their little nestlings or little, you know, chick, I guess you say chicks or whatever. And then they, they raise them up to a certain point and they fly out. And then some of the islands, like I said, there's not only the, the marsh grass, there's also a little scrubby vegetation around too. Right, right. So That's really cool. It's kind of cool, yeah. That is really cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jackson. Thanks so much. And thank you for uh, visiting out. with us too, Cassidy. <laughs> and good luck with your career. <laughs> yes, sir. We want to thank Jackson for coming on our podcast and um, um, sharing with us about his um, life and his work. And we appreciate that um, he was willing to spend some time with us, uh, you know, talking about his uh, his views on stuff. Um, but for the Louisiana Anthology Podcast, I'm Bruce McGee. And I'm Steve Payne. We certainly do want to thank Jackson. Uh, if you are interested in his music, he's got uh, a page on YouTube. You can go listen to some of it. He's also got some of his music available uh, for sale. So do do go check him out. Do support these local uh, musicians, particularly these young ones, because they're trying to kind of make their name and establish an audience. So again, we uh, want to thank Jackson for joining us this week. We also want to thank all of you for listening in, and we hope you'll join us for next week's edition of the Louisiana Anthology Podcast. Bye for now.